message coming straight from the heart in path to impart we're giving all sinners a brand new start in path to impart we're sending the message Sending no message coming straight from the heart in path to impart. We're giving all sinners a brand new start. Warm welcome impact. to one and all. This is Impact to Impact Ministry. I'm your host, Bishop Sheldon Holder, and we want you to know that you can come join us here at our beautiful sanctuary every Sunday at 9 a.m. Midweek services, we have street meetings, and Fridays, Young Samuels Club youth children and youth ministries we want to let you know that you can be blessed even as you would come so come be a part of us and let us have a wonderful time together remember we are here to share the message of hope he offers peace eternally we're here to help other people escape shalom impact to impart. we're sending no message coming straight from the heart impact to impart we're giving all sinners a brand new start. Impact to impart. We're sending the message. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Impact to Impact Ministries. And uh, we're happy that we are in your home again and you have allowed us to just invade your space for a short while. And we pray that you will be blessed as you rejoin this broadcast. I'm your host, Bishop Sheldon Holler. And we'll be sharing with you the wonderful good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we have been sharing week after week. Today is no exception and we want to just continue um, building you up, encouraging you in this glorious message of hope. I want to continue to share as we've been sharing for the past week concerning the topic grow. Uh, today I want to just continue on that topic just for one more time also um, to just continue to sharpen you and to encourage your faith. Today I will be focusing in the Word of God, uh, a very little portion of Scripture, and um, be taking you through a very interesting piece of thought. So get your Bibles, get your friends invited, go call your friend, tell them fast, Impact in Part Ministry is on, and we are about ready to get going with the Word of God. Now that you have your Bible, could you turn to, with me to Mark's Gospel, chapter 24, or rather, Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, and we're reading verse 24. And uh, it reads, let me read it for you, as you read it also for yourself. It says, and he said unto them, take heed what you hear with your, with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear it shall more be given. Let me read it again. It says, Take heed what ye hear, with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear it shall more be given. And uh, this scripture really says, and I, I want you to highlight what Jesus Christ is saying. Take heed what you hear. And I want you to know that and look at Luke's report in Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8 verse 18. It says here, Take heed therefore what you hear. Take heed how ye hear. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not from him shall be taken, even that which he seemeth to have. Now, I want to take note of these two very important scriptures. In Mark chapter 4, verse 24, and verse 25, really add some more. Same reference here in Luke's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 18. As we think and we talk about continuing to grow, um, it's important that we put these two on the table. Because what I'll be sharing with you is a very important piece of information today. And I want you to take good note of it. This piece of information really speaks about the fact and the reality. And let me give you two, two other portions of scripture before I begin to just share with you. In Jeremiah chapter 17. And uh, Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 8. We're going to turn there quickly in your Bibles. Right. And uh, we're going to just 
share with you a little piece of information here. Hear the word of God here in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 8. It says, For you shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding. Now, Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 8 speaks expressly the thought that is made mention in the first psalm psalm chapter number one and everybody knows that psalm we quote that psalm quite often in that psalm chapter one first psalm verse three hear what the psalmist speaks everybody knows the psalm but here it gets down to verse three it says ye shall be like a tree Planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he do it shall prosper. Now, remember we're talking about grow. I want to let you know that God's idea, his, his thought for you, is that you be a fruitful plant. The word of God calls you a tree. He calls us tree because there is... A lot of symbolism in, in being a tree as a human being you know uh, we we the seed the process of the growth the process of the establishment of a of a personal human being and then finally the ultimate expression of our symbolism to a tree is that of fruitfulness you know that God's desire he made us inside of us there's a seed and this seed it it, it, it grows it grows and becomes something that should be fruitful and this is the fruitfulness that Onesimus had required and expressed that he, he desired that hey you'll be you become fruitful knowledgeable about the things of God the will of God and uh, the real idea is that you bear fruit but I want to share with you today a little secret that there is somebody out there somebody out there not not in your home no not not in your car not in your in your village but there is somebody out there that is much bigger than that who is called your enemy and his desire is that you don't bear fruit his will and his plan is that your fruit bearing capacity must be stunned it must be halted it must be totally devastated and destroyed because in not bearing fruit he knows fully well that as a tree if you're not bearing fruit um, there is an order that God gave concerning an unfruitful tree. When it talks about us as believers and as a human being on a whole, if you are unfruitful in life, you know, um, Jesus Christ, when he spoke about it, that unfruitful branch or tree, it is hewed up by man and cast into the fire. And ultimately, that devil knows that this is going to be your portion. If you are fruitless, you're not bearing fruit in this life, um, you are no good to God. And ultimately, it means that you have to be cast aside, cast out. Because God desires fruitfulness. Are you hearing me? So Isaiah, rather Jeremiah, as we spoke about it, he said, you're going to be as a tree that is not going to know heat. It doesn't matter the season. It doesn't matter the time of the year. It could be drought everywhere around, but you are going to be fruitful. But that enemy of your soul want to stop you from becoming fruitful. So what are we sharing about today um, that I'm using this scripture? The scripture that we would have quoted from Mark's gospel and Luke's gospel is a scripture that follows directly on the heels of Jesus speaking concerning fruitfulness. Jesus was saying, and he, he gave a parable. Is this is the parable when you talk about the sower. And the sower went out to sow. He has his seeds. And he's sowing his seed, and some of the seed itself fell on some stony ground. And because it didn't have no root, the sun came and scorched it up. The roots had no, no, no way to be able to get water. It died. He said some of the seeds, he, they fell on among the part, it was choked up. And some, some of them fell in a part that the birds were seeing them. They just dive down and just eat them up. Those that fell among, in those, among tears, 
right? They, they choked them so that even though they were growing, they didn't have a real chance because the others around them was, was just stifling their possibility and their potential. And then he finally said, but some fell on good gongs. And those that fell on good gongs, they brought forth fruit, some 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. I know you remember the, that portion of the scripture. But then Jesus entered into this portion. And a lot of times we don't see it because it comes so subtle that Jesus Christ, he said after he would have given them all of this nice talk, talk about, about the, the fruitful seeds that became tree and bear fruit, he went to a next step in the matter. He's saying now that those who are fruitful, you need to watch out. If it is that you're bearing much fruit, he's going to give you more opportunity to bear more fruit. But after you would have gone through stony, you have gone through the birds, you have gone through the, 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 the chokes in life, even if you survive all of that and you, you, you still manage to become a believer in Christ, you escape all these things, now you have the potential to go. He's still saying to you, watch out, because if you're not, if you're not being careful, there is somebody there waiting to cut you down. So, as we, we utilize the rest of this time that we have in this broadcast, I want to tell you something that is very fascinating. As I talked about this scripture, uh, I, the, the next thing that the Lord would have spoken to me about is how to kill a tree. How to kill a tree. Since the word of God called us tree, the devil in his, in his, and his on constant onslaught against us, his desire is to cut us down. You know, I thought about how to kill a tree, and then immediately have to wonder why kill a tree? And why, and if you're talking about killing a tree, really, really you could call it a, become an enemy of a tree. God's desire for you is that you be a tree. But why should someone desire to cut you down? Why is there someone out there planning how to assassinate you, a tree? And this is what I want you to understand what is going on. But Ephesians rightfully said that even as a tree, your fight is not against human beings, but against an enemy that is unseen. An enemy that is working behind closed doors, dark places, diabolically, to see you fall. To see you come to a place of unfruitfulness and ultimately dried up and cut off. That real enemy, the Ephesians says, is principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, all network and controlled by the mastermind, Lucifer, Satan, that old devil, the dragon. He desire to cut you down. You might find yourself in a place today of unfruitfulness, and you, you're asking yourself, why it is that my life has become so unfruitful? And that is because your enemy have done some things to destroy you. So as I thought about how to kill a tree, I, I would have gone and looked into it, how to kill a tree. There, there are primarily two ways to kill a tree. You can cut it down, or you can poison it. That's the primary way how do you kill a tree. Well, you have a third way, you could bulldoze it, which is just like cutting it down. And ultimately, what has been happening to your life is two things. Many people have been cut off where the enemy comes and he literally bulldozes your life. He has come into your life and run everything out that have been good, have been proper, have been order, have been structured, have been godly, holiness, righteousness. The devil just come and he bulldozes everything down. You're not standing anymore. And that's a sad place to be in. How he used it is different forms. You see, many times you think that the circumstances that you're faced with is just people, but it's not people. It's people used by the enemy to bring about an action. Some of you today, you're watching this broadcast. 
You're no longer in a church. You're no longer in the house of God. You're no longer in a place of worship. Your life has been bulldozed, wrecked. The enemy have cut you down to stump. You don't even want to hear the name of God no more. You don't want to hear the name Jesus. You don't want to associate. You don't want to fellowship with what is righteousness. Rather, you prefer to fellowship with the dark. That's a life that I've been bulldozed. Ultimately, you think, you think you're standing, but you're dead already. Because your enemy have already uprooted you. Every substance that is good and proper inside of you have already been de destroyed by the enemy so that you don't bear fruit. So now you bear a different type of fruit. You, you bear rot, malice, and anger, and jealousies, and... And, and, and pride and all sorts of immorality. You bear all sorts of, of things, hurts and disgrace. You, you break truths, you break covenants. You, you, you're not able to keep your wife. You're not able to stay with your husband. You can't love your children no more. This is fruits that you're bearing now, but it's all on the wrong side of the fence. And that's because your life has been either cut off, bulldozed, or poisoned. But let me talk a little bit more about poisoning because to poison a tree is really a strategy used by somebody who wants to kill a tree without anybody knowing that they killed it. Who wants to destroy that plant. A neighbor that hates the fact that that tree is sending leaves in their property season after season. They decide they want to kill that tree. A neighbor that decides that that tree is too fruitful, you know, you, you might say, well, that sounds so ironic. And some of you may be laughing at home right now because you have known some things whereby your tree, in its season of bearing, it bears so much mango, so much breadfruit, it becomes a nuisance. That's what you say. Or rather, that's what the neighbors say. Flies, so much flies because the fruit, fruits are falling to the ground. It's a fruitful tree. It's doing its job. If it was a tree that's standing there not bearing food, it's not doing its job. If it's a breadfruit tree and it's overflowing with breadfruit, it's a pomeranac tree, it's a cashew tree, it's a mango tree, it's an orange tree, a grapefruit tree, whatever tree, a guava tree. If it's fruitful, there will be evidence of fruit on the ground. And when fruits are not used, they attract flies. And that's another message altogether. We're not going to go there. But the enemy of that fruitful tree comes and says, it doesn't matter the category of tree. It doesn't matter if it's a jamun. It doesn't matter if it's some sort of mango. They say that the fruitfulness of that tree is a nuisance to them. And some of you could identify with me saying that today because as your life have been bearing fruit, good fruit, love and joy and peace and patience and temperance and self-control and meekness and kindness and gentleness and all these fruits are coming out and you, you, can, you can properly relate to people and socialize, you, you help and you, you know, you, you're doing kindness in the neighborhood and some people say, well, you do, you are a nuisance to us. I want to let you know that it's not time to stop bearing fruit, but watch out because there are those that will try to cut you down, bulldoze you, or poison you. And I, as I talk about the poisoning, that's why we came to this portion in Mark and in Luke's gospel. Be careful what you hear. Be careful how you hear it. Those are the two verses. Be careful what you hear. Be careful how you hear. Because these two things are very pertinent to your fruitfulness. Now, how does the enemy get to poison you? The only way poison works is that it has to get into the bloodstream. It has to get into the main lines. And it flows through the system that have been set in place. In order to poison a tree, you can take an arrow. And you know the word of God talks about that. David says, you don't ever be afraid of the arrows that fly by day nor the pestilence that walk it by night. The enemy uses arrows. Arrows with poison placed at the tip of it. And you might find that even in these arrows that the enemy uses, even a child gets involved. Because the child simply thinks it's a game. The child thinks it's a game where they make a statement, a pointed statement, a direct statement. 
because they heard someone else saying it and they just make the statement. But they don't know that that statement, it have sent poison through the veins. You know, children in school and one child making names to another. A simple thing as name calling. It's a pointed arrow used by the enemy. Put poison on the edge of it and hand it into the hand of the innocent, the unsuspecting. Unfortunately, though, it is sometimes handed into the hands of a marksman. A person who knows fully well what they are engaged in and they have purposefully set out to shoot arrows at you with the intent to poison your mind, to poison you from that process, from going forward in being kind and in loving and serving the Lord. Serving the Lord with gladness. Poison is used. You know, I, as I studied it, you know, you can take poison, they say also, and you could just drill some holes in the root and just pour it down inside of there. It's like the poison that that enemy fed to Eve. The poison that Lucifer fed to Eve that said, did God really say that? Simple words. I mean, he went to the root, to the root of the woman, drilled some holes and just put some simple words. Did God really say that? And that poison began to work. Because Eve started to consider really and truly, this tree really means me no harm. This tree have not done me anything. I mean, I've been looking at it. Nothing is wrong in looking at it. I look, look, tomorrow I'm going to try to touch it. There I touched it. Nothing is wrong with but me touching it. And then she went to the next stage. Well, do you know what? Tomorrow when I go there, I'm not going to look at it and I'm not going to just touch it. I'm going to lick it. I'm going to taste it. Let me just taste it. I'm just going to just, not going to bite it. I'm just going to just pass my tongue on it to see how it feels. That poison was infiltrating her heart. It moved from one stage to the next. Before you know it, she was not on watching it, touching it, tasting it. She was on the stage called eating it. She took a bite out of it and she ate. It really wasn't just about the fruit, the word of God says. It really was about the disobedience. Because the mere fact that you as a person could go against the very ordinances of God it's not really about the food. It's about the fact that you can turn your back from the one that have given you everything to disobey him and do something for which he had said and, and totally banished you, forbidden you from partaking in. Poison. Poison by words. Specific words laid at a root. Specific arrows shot at her with one intent to stop fruitfulness, to cut a tree down, to make a tree no longer profitable or worthy to be called a child of God, a son of God. Today you're watching this broadcast, you're at home, and you might have been one of those that have been poisoned. You have been poisoned with anger. You heard something. Now, it might not even be true. You know, the word of God said there are six things God hates. Seven is an abomination. You know that list? Top of the list, a lying tongue. You hear the top of that list? Seeds of discord. False witness. An improper scale. You hear the list that God, God hates these things. And when we think about what Jesus Christ came and preached on earth, it talks about brotherly love. He said, this is how God is going to know. The, the people will know that you are my disciples. Love. But some, somewhere along the line, you have been poisoned with anger. One entrance. A thought, a word. Something that you heard. You thought that was what you heard. But it was not the truth. The truth is that God loves you. 
The truth is today is that God died for you. Christ died for you. The truth is that he has shed his blood that you can be purchased. The truth is that he have indeed done everything and given unto you everything that pertains to life and to godliness. You have everything in him. We shared last week, you are complete in him. Complete. That's the truth. But somewhere along the line, as I'm speaking to you there today, I'm hearing the heart of some person crying out because you have been poisoned. You have been shared a lie. You have been given information that have been misquoted, misdirected. You have been fed a lie that you know what, you, you can do this your own way. You have been fed a lie that there are all the rivers leading to the same one God. You are not able to take the truth. The truth is that there is only one way one truth and one life and that's jesus christ my time is gone today we want to get ready to wrap up but today if you have been poisoned the reason why we are sharing the message of hope is called the antidote we have the antidote for that poison he offers peace eternally the message of hope jesus christ the son of god born of a woman lived the life as a man crucified risen again so that you might have life today you in that home you're in that position you found that yourself in that place you want out you want to be free i want you to pray this prayer with me and i'm going to pray with you in jesus name father i just commit every person there that is hearing us i pray lord today as they would pray father we've heard your words i ask you forgive me of all of my wrong, I ask and invite your son Jesus Christ into my heart right now. Wash me of your, of, with your blood. Cleanse me of all my sins and make me to be your child. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, today I lift up every person that is watching this broadcast. I pray for that man. I pray for that woman. I pray for that young girl. A young boy, I pray that, Lord, you minister your grace. Your message of hope will reach their heart that they will know that you, oh God, have died, that they can live. So, Lord, right now, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. I ask your cleansing. I ask your purging. I ask your washing of every soul that have been looking at us, listening to this broadcast thus far. And I ask that you grant unto them the freedom, the release from that curse of sin, freedom by your power, by your blood. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, I want to thank you for joining our broadcast. We want to let you know that we do love you. We appreciate every single one of you. We want to ask you to write to us, impact to impact ministries at gmail.com. Drop a line, let us know that you give your life to Christ. You can come and find our church. You've given your heart to Christ. You want to get going again with Christ. Find us. Our church is located at the corner of Plymouth Road and Union Connector. Our service are every Sunday morning, 9 a.m. A warm welcome awaits you. And if you're a young boy, a young girl, we have a Friday program for you. Change the World Group, Young Samuels Club. The club begins at 445 the youth they begin at 6 30. you can come out and be a part of this and we want you to know most of all that in every single thing that you're doing in life god wants you to be fruitful so i want to continue to challenge you to grow grow in wisdom grow in grace grow in the knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ this is bishop shalom Ola saying we do love you until next time i say shalom amen Impact. Coming straight from the heart Impact to impart We're giving all sinners a brand new start Impact to impart We're sending the message